Good morning, Sharptown Church. We are so excited to worship with you this morning. I know that it is just a little bit hot, um, but these songs, there's some, some re repeating words like dancing and running, and so feel free to dance and run around in your little square, that is, um, socially distanced dancing, it's a new thing. Um, but we love to have you just get up and, and move your bodies. Uh, all of our songs are about freedom. We are free, right? This is such a beautiful reminder of our freedom in Christ. So let's sing the song Freedom together. <laughs>
where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. Amen. Amen. Woo. Yeah. Blow that horn there, Lisa. <laughs> All right. I am free. I am free to run. I am free to dance. I am free to live for you. I am free. Let's sing it.
together and say thank you to Tony Baker and her horse for us this morning. Woo! Grateful Tony for helping us this morning during our worship time. You are familiar with these words out of 2 Chronicles in chapter 7. We recognize as God is speaking to His people, He says that there are going to be calamities and circumstances that are going to come in your direction. However, if my people, that's you, that's me, those who have a relationship with Him, are called by my name, will humble themselves and pray, and seek my face, and turn from their wicked ways, I will hear from heaven. On this 4th of July weekend, we want to continue in an attitude not only of asking God's blessing upon our country and our land, but even the circumstances surrounding this pandemic of social unrest. Will you join with me and let's look him in his direction this morning and seek his face. Pause with me, if you will, for a word of prayer. Thank you for the promises inside of Scripture that if we come in your direction, we seek your face. We turn from our wicked ways. We understand that if you're to move inside of our country, this starts with us. And so today, Lord, we are reminded of the blessings we share as the people of God in this land of ours. Thank you so much for the freedom that we share that we've had a chance to sing about. Thank you for the freedom that we share, that we understand what that looks like even spiritually as you move in our hearts and inside of our lives. Thank you for this morning's time together of worship, and we look in your direction, and we, Lord, as a country, as a people, repent from our wicked ways. We would ask, Lord, you'll do something in the midst of this pandemic. Slow the spread of the virus. May a vaccine be found. May circumstances in our country reverse in this situation. It grieves our heart because we would much rather be together in community, but because of the circumstances, we still have the ability and the freedom, though, to meet here, and we're grateful for that. We want to say, Lord, too, that you'll move in the midst of our country. The headlines and the, the visuals and the optics from around the civil unrest is disturbing for us. May that start with us as well. And continue to work inside of our hearts. Search our hearts and see if there be some wicked way in us. And Lord, we ask that you'll continue to move inside of our community, inside of our county, inside of our region. That we might know a God who has the capacity to not only heal our land, but to bring revival inside of our community. We stand together today in your presence asking you. Humbling ourselves, moving away from wickedness, turning to you to seek your face. Oh Lord, do something first inside of our lives. May that ripple inside of our community, inside of our county. May we, Lord, have a time not only of repentance, but may we turn in your direction. Thank you for your Holy Spirit here today. Move in our midst, we ask in Jesus' name. Thank you for being here. We look in your direction. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Before you're seated, turn to the person next to you, if you will. Wave to them, if you will. Have a moment of greeting. Say hello. Socially distance. And we're glad to be together at the body of Christ. <clears throat> Well, good morning once again, Sharptown Church. Is Sharptown the coolest church in all of the United States? I think it is. I think it is. Super cool again to have Tony with us to come walking in with the American flag. That's something I won't soon forget. But a couple things I want to share about Sharptown that are just going to make your hearts swell. Sharptown, we do some really, really neat things. And from an office staff, it's cool that we get a front row seat, and we want you to know about these things. And so this evening, right here on this platform, the Woodstown High School students are going to be here having their baccalaureate service. 
They were looking for a place to host that. Several of our students in the youth group are part of that, and they called over. And so Jeff Dobbs, Brian Locuson, absolutely sure use this platform. So that's tonight at 630. If you're not doing anything, you're welcome to come on out and see. Some of our kids are participating. In addition to that, when all of the COVID-19 things started and everything was closed down, including some of the emergency management offices and spaces, there was nowhere for the Red Cross to hold a blood drive because all the buildings were closed. And so our, our administrative board met and we opened up our building for a blood drive. And so we've been hosting them at Sharptown. I want to tell you, we had a blood drive about a month and a half ago. Here's where your blood went. To the Children's Hospital of Philadelphia, Einstein Medical Center, Jefferson Hospital in Cherry Hill, St. Mary's Medical Center, and Robert Wood Johnson University. So thank you, Sharptown. Thank you for the leadership for opening our building, working with Bob DiGregorio to make a way to do that safely. I say that to let you know we're having another blood drive. On July the 20th from 2 to 7 p.m., you can jump on redcross.org if you would like to serve and to help in that way. Marion Clark, huge passion for people in ministry. She's sitting right over there in the corner. If you have a question about that, talk to Marion, but she kind of leads those ministries. And so that's just another neat thing that we are doing. So now I have an announcement you might be happy about, you might not be happy about. Personally, I'm thrilled. We are going to be here for service through the end of July. It, there seems to be a rise in the COVID-19 cases in Salem County, and so we thought it safest and best to continue to meet outside. So if you remember last week, Doug was great. Announced at 8, 9, 30, 11. Forget all that. Wipe that clean. That'll be for August, hopefully. So we're going to be here the next couple weeks, at least through the end of July. If you have a lawn sign in your yard, please doctor that, fix that. Just put through the end of July if you can and leave them out and help us share about that. And then I just want to continue to thank all of those that are involved in making this possible, from our greeters to Arsenal Sound, our worship team. Thank you guys for being here and sweating each and every week for Brian, for the trailer. And one additional thing for you folks online, Dave Keen came and hooked us up with some internet out here. And so first week we had a few issues. He came, there's a beamer over there. If you look close, it's hitting over here and there's a wire under the stage. So you guys online can catch our live feed. So thank you, Dave Keen and everybody else who continues to be involved. So if you would like to, at the end of the service, there'll be some buckets up here. If you want to give an offering on the way out or our greeters on the way out, we appreciate that. We've been saying each week that it's an anomaly. We are holding at like 90-some percent with our giving. You people are amazing, and God is good. So thanks for being here. Happy 4th of July. At this time, we are just going to pray one more time, and then we're going to continue in worship. If you are looking for the lyrics to the songs, they're at sharptown.org. They're on the YouVersion Bible app and in an email that comes out on Friday. And so if you have your phones, you can jump on there and follow along if you need to. Let's go to before him one more time this morning. Dear Heavenly Father, we can't help but shout through the rooftop that you are awesome, that you are amazing. Lord, we ask your blessing on this country. Lord, we love you. We worship you. Thanks for the way that you provide for us. And as we think about our offering this morning, may you continue to use it to make a difference. Lord, we celebrate that a community is here on our platform tonight having their baccalaureate service. We celebrate for those who come out and give blood and for people in our congregation who have a heart for other people and give in that way. Lord, continue to direct our paths. We will continue to keep our eyes on you and follow and be obedient. We love you. In your name we pray. Amen. But he 
our prayer this morning Lord may the spirit of God your spirit be poured out on your people today 
May you, Lord, continue to speak to our hearts that you would use us as individuals, willing vessels to reach a world that needs to know you. Heal our land. Continue, God, as we stand in the gap on this 4th of July weekend, will you help us as we look in your direction? Will you move in and amongst us this morning? May you do a work that even begins in our heart today. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen. <clears throat> so thankful for our music teams week to week and so grateful for Emily, for Phil and the family, uh, for Ty on the keyboards and for Dave on the guitar. So grateful this morning for our time together. <clears throat> so disregard the announcement about meeting back at Sharptown, huh? And uh, we're back out here through the end of July or till the end of July. And uh, we're glad about that. Uh, we do want to go ahead and say thank you once again to Grant and Betsy Harris. Uh, so grateful that they've opened up their facility for us and uh, made that possible. In addition... Uh, we could not do this uh, without Arsenal Sound each and every Sunday and their calendar. They've made themselves available through the end of July. Thankful for that as well. <clears throat> Want to continue also to encourage you, uh, if you're unable to join us in person, uh, we welcome you and encourage you to join us online. So glad to have you folks online this morning as well as we share this time together. So the other day I went to the eye doctor and uh, had a chance. I try to get that done in the first couple months of every calendar year and uh, sat in the uh, chair and the, uh, the, the technician says, uh, Doug, I've known her for a while. I could, she had my mask on. She had her mask on, you know, and she said, listen, I just want you to know uh, the doctor thinks your eyes are fine. However, at your age... And I, I was like, what? She said, at your age, we need to run a couple of other tests. <clears throat> and I thought, uh, man, I, I don't feel like I'm at the at your age category. But apparently I'm uh, at the at your age category. I made a follow-up appointment. And as I sat there in the chair with my chin in that little cup with my head you know, in a kind of like a place where I couldn't move. I was thankful uh, for an opportunity to recognize that uh, God has a capacity to do something about not only our physical eyesight through glasses and through contact lenses, but the Bible talks about the way in which He can do something about our spiritual eyesight as well. This past week, as we were making the decision to... Uh, gather back here for the remainder of July, uh, it was not an easy decision to make, and so we started troubleshooting. How can we try to go ahead and to help people as they come back to Cowtown, because for the next several Sundays, we're going to do a congregational study, and as we do that, we're going to try to work our way through a passage of Scripture. And so I was kind of whining just a little bit, and I was, uh, Ben and Kristen were in the room, and I was saying, well, how in the world can we have people log on? What if the internet doesn't work? How can we put the Word of God in people's hands? How can we study the verses together? How can we do that? And all of a sudden, <clears throat> Kristen says, well, why don't we ask them to bring their Bibles? <laughs> that was a novel concept, right? The church gets together and brings their Bibles. And so I just want to say to you, in that moment, uh, one of those epiphany moments, eyes opened, right? And I thought, that's a pretty cool thing. You can actually bring a Bible with you to Caltown, and we can work uh, through some passages of Scripture. So uh, invite your friends, tell them, make sure they bring their Bible when they come. And we also want to invite you, you certainly can go ahead and open your app and join us on version. Uh, online. So as Paul was having the opportunity in the New Testament and he was having a chance to speak to those who he came in contact with, repeatedly he offered this prayer. I pray that the eyes of your heart would be opened. 
the eyes of your heart would be opened. My senior year, as I was finishing up getting ready to graduate from Millville High School, in the next town over in Bridgeton, they were having an event. The churches had gathered together and they invited a guy who occasionally was a platform speaker for Billy Graham around the country. The guy's name was Bill Glass. And Bill Glass used to play in the NFL. He played with the Detroit Lions. And don't tell Jerry Ruff, but he also played with the Cleveland Browns for a little while. <clears throat> Bill Glass uh, was a, uh, a compelling speaker as he shared his testimony all around the country. And I think that last year he celebrated 50 years of evangelistic ministry. Bill Glass came to Bridgeton. And as he came to Bridgeton, some of the churches were looking for people to talk to other people about their faith and counsel them when they responded at the end of the service. Bill Glass was cut out of the same fabric as Billy Graham. And so at the end of the service, you sang, Just as I am, without one plea, but that your blood was shed for me. And you were invited to walk down and stand in front of the podium there at the Bridgeton football field. I attended most every night with my dad, who grew up a Cleveland Browns fan. As I was going through this training process, I understood that uh, as I was having a chance to give my testimony, something was important about how to give your testimony. That it was important to tell your story about how your life looked before Jesus Christ came in. And then what happened in that moment and then what your life looked like afterwards. Because, listen, New Testament Christianity says this. There's always a change. There's always a change of action. There's always a change of behavior. There's always a transforming change. And so they used this passage of scripture out of John chapter 9. About the guy who was born blind. And Jesus came along and said, uh, can I help you? And he said, yes, I can't see. And Jesus reached down and he picked up some mud and he put it in his hand and spit in his hand and he put it on the guy's eyes and said, I want you to go wash your eyes. And then the religious leaders called him in front of them and said, listen, tell us what happened. And he said, uh, listen, I, I can't tell you anything about this guy, anything other than you already know. And so then they interrogated his mom and his dad. And they said, was he really born blind? He can't be the same guy. And they said, yeah, he's the same guy. He's been here for years. He has not been able to see. And so they called him a second time to stand in front of the Pharisees. And they said, tell us your story. And he said this, all I know is once I was blind, now I can see. There's been a transformation. Something's happened inside of my life. Once I couldn't see, now I can see. Do you know inside of the New Testament as Jesus engages people and talks to them. He regularly speaks about the scriptures and he opens up God's word. One passage in particular out of the gospel of Luke as the Mr. and Mrs. Cleopas were walking on the road to Emmaus. And it says their eyes were opened. Their eyes were opened. Today I want to take you to a section of the Bible inside of the book of Acts. It's in Acts chapter 17. And it's the story behind the story today. In Acts chapter 17, we read about Paul... And we read about the one who's traveling with Paul. His name is Silas. Paul and Silas have moved through some of the smaller communities. And they've made their way to a place called Thessalonica. In Thessalonica, they have the chance to immediately then go to the synagogue. And there they told their story. They told about how it was. That Jesus Christ had met him on the road to Damascus. And what his life looked like before. And what his life looked like afterwards. But there in 
Acts chapter 17, we read these words as well. It says that Paul went into the synagogue and on three Sabbath days he reasoned with them from Scripture. He explained and he proved that Jesus was the Messiah, that he had to suffer and die, and that Jesus was who he said he was. Now, what's fascinating to me about that is that in my training for the Bill Glass Crusade, way, way back years and years ago, they made this statement. Just tell people what Jesus has done in your life. No one can argue with that. And I, for years, believed that to be true. Except in the year 2020... When I had a conversation recently with someone and I said, this is what happened in my life. And they said this, well, that truth might be for you, but that's not my truth. That might be true for you, but that's not my truth. And I began to recognize that we live inside of a world that desperately needs people who have the ability to explain scripture and identify what is true and what is not true. That what used to count for a personal experience and a life transforming, I don't know what happened to me. One day I could not see, but now I can see. Sometimes when we have this conversation, that just isn't enough. And it wasn't enough for the people in the town of Thessalonica. It wasn't enough for the people who were gathered around Paul there in the midst of that situation. What happened, though, was a small group of people responded to Paul's story about life change and life transformation. They gave their heart to Jesus Christ. Their eyes, once they were blind, they could now see. And as a result of that, a small church, a small gathering began to happen in Thessalonica. The people inside of that community became rather unsettled about the Christian movement hitting their community. And so in the middle of Paul's second missionary journey, they went looking for him in Thessalonica to arrest him and to put him in jail, which had happened to him just a couple of nights before in Philippi. Paul is nowhere to be found. And so they, in chapter 17, arrest one of the new converts whose name is Jason, and they put him before the tribunal. They eventually throw him in jail for his faith. And you have here, inside of the early church, a movement about people were forced and compelled to ask the question, is Jesus Christ for real? Because if he's for real, I'm willing to go to jail. If he's for real, I'm willing to go ahead and stand up. If he's for real, I'm willing to lay my life down. If he's for real, then something can transact inside of my life. And so, Jason was arrested and put in jail. And Paul and Silas slipped out the back roads of Thessalonica and went to the next town called Berea. In a few short months, Paul sends Timothy back to check on the early church. Because you see, that's what people who have a heart for others do. They want to check on their spiritual progress. Young Timothy responds to Paul and says, things are going well. Things are going very well in the church in Thessalonica. And so Paul sits down and he writes the very first letter to the early church inside of the New Testament. First Thessalonians is the first church that Paul writes to. It's the first recorded letter we have about the early church of the 27 books inside of the Bible. So here's what I would like to invite you to do over the next couple of weeks. First Thessalonians only has 1,600 words in it. That means that if you were to type on a piece of paper, single spaced, this is only three pages long. 89 verses, 
1,600 words, five chapters. Inside of the book of 1 Thessalonians, we find the things that are most important about the early church. Here we discover what, it, what and how we are to love and care for one another. Here we discover how we should be prepared when Jesus returns. Here we discover what holy living looks like. Here we discover what people's concern about how or what happens when we close our eyes in death and Jesus has not come back yet. If you were to go on the YouVersion app and press the button and have somebody read to you 1 Thessalonians, this only takes 14 minutes. You can do this in 14 minutes between this Sunday and next Sunday. I want to invite you to journey with us. Bring your Bibles. We're going to read about 1 Thessalonians. We're going to take it in bite-sized pieces and think together about how the early church transformed the world because of the gospel of Jesus Christ. I love this verse as it's describing what happens to Paul, to the new believers in Thessalonica, and to those who were following many reputable businesswomen as well, the Bible says. Here's what it says. They went looking for Paul and Silas. They couldn't find them. They dragged Jason and some other believers before the city officials. And here's what it says. These, these people have turned the world upside down. These people have turned the world upside down. We've had the opportunity today to sing about the Holy Spirit moving in our lives, in our community. The reason why Paul gets to Thessalonica to begin with is in chapter 16, the Holy Spirit had given him a vision and said, I want you to go. I want you to go. And Sharptown Church, maybe the same mandate is being given to us during the months of July and August. That we are people who, Peter says, can not only handle the word of truth, but always are ready to give an account for the hope of glory that lies within us. And that God would be glorified as we not only tell our stories and invite other people to know him, but also have the capacity to open the Bible and help people understand what is true and what is not true. All of us have a chance to do this, not just the paid religious people. All of us have a chance to do this, not just those people who find themselves in small groups. All of us have the opportunity. And so we want to look at the letter of 1 Thessalonians for the next couple of weeks as we continue to maintain service here at Caltown. Bring your Bibles. Prayerfully, prayerfully, we'll be able to have the opportunity to say something like the man in chapter 9 said in John. I don't know. All I know is this is what I used to be, but now this is who I am. I believe as Emily sang earlier, that when the Holy of Spirit of God moves inside of our hearts and lives, we not only recognize who we are, but we recognize who He is. And we have the capacity to look inside of God's Word. And the written Word bears witness to the living Word that He is the way, the truth, and the life. Today, we're going to, in just a moment, grab your communion cup and your bread and we're going to have a chance to commune together I'm going to ask Ty to kind of make his way back over here and he's going to play softly if you're visiting with us online now would be a great time for you to run to the kitchen grab a cup of water grab a cracker grab a drink of juice grab a piece of bread we want you to share this time with us we have given to you these communion cups, <clears throat> you recognize that they're in the top. That's the small, stale styrofoam wafer. 
representing the body of Christ. Inside is the blood of Christ represented by the juice. If you do not have communion elements, I think you can run to the, there's some in the back, or some over here. We want to invite you to grab those now. <clears throat> Let me remind you, it was only one month ago that in our final service inside of Sharptown Church Online, before we came outside, we made these statements. That as Jesus had gathered the disciples together, he in fact had the opportunity to give them bread and a cup. And he said, when you do this, do this in remembrance of me. We had the opportunity to think a little bit about what it means to be people who do this. Let me remind you that the Apostle Paul's experience inside of Thessalonica about them coming to look for him because he had turned the world upside down. That maybe inside of our lives today, that as Jesus compels us to be people who are broken and spilled out. Broken like the piece of bread. Spilled out like the juice. That we are people who give ourselves to partner with him for the salvation and the transformation of the world. Next Sunday, we're going to begin in chapter 1, verse 1. Bring your Bibles. Join us online as well as we talk together about how it is that God compelled Paul, Silas, Timothy, Luke to pour themselves out in such a way that others would come to know God's love, God's holiness, and understand who Jesus Christ was. Today, as we pause in this moment, I want you to grab hold then of this cup. You can open that up if you will. When Jesus gathered his disciples together the night before he went to the cross, he sat around the table with them and he said, this familiar bread is a reminder of my body, which is going to be broken for you. Broken. Let me remind you that the same thing that happened to Jesus is what he invites for us. That's the reason why Paul in chapter 16 of the book of Acts was beaten and put in jail. And that was a repeated thing that happened to him. And yet he makes the statement that he glories in the midst of that happening to him. Broken. The broken bread reminds us consistently of the life that is in front of us, the life that invites us to be broken because he was broken, will you take and eat it? And then Jesus took a very common, ordinary cup. They were familiar with this. It was Passover time. But Jesus gave the ordinary cup an extraordinary meaning. Pour it out. My blood shed for you. The Old Testament says that it's because of these stripes on the back of Jesus Christ and his shed blood that we can find healing. Broken, poured out for you. Take and drink it. Just as a statement of common courtesy, make sure they find them in your car and not on the parking lot here in the next few minutes or hours. So I want to invite you to join me in the next couple of weeks as we examine the book of 1 Thessalonians. 
the first book written inside of the New Testament, the first letter that Paul writes, it was not even 20 years after the death of Jesus Christ. Here we find some of the most important statements about the early church and some of the most important statements about what it means to be people who follow Jesus Christ. Let me invite you then, as we journey together, as we open these pages, bring your Bibles, read ahead, listen online, have someone from the app read the Bible to you. Whatever it's necessary to go ahead and take these 89 verses, these five chapters, these 1,600 words, to root them inside of your life during these next few days and few weeks, I want to invite you to join me. And our prayer is this, that somewhere in the midst of this, that our eyes would be open to something new that God wants to teach us through His Word. Stand with me if you would like to. You don't have to, but if you would like to, as we conclude our time, the band's going to come back and share a closing song. And then, as we conclude our time together, I want to invite you as well to exit in an orderly fashion. Thank you for being here with us once again today. Thank you for joining us online. We look forward to what God has for us in these next few weeks as we study His Word together. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you today for what you've done in our hearts inside of our lives. May you turn our world upside down. Or maybe, if we feel more comfortable with this language today, in a malfunctioning world, may you help us as the people of God to turn the world right side up. Use our lives. Use our witness. Use Sharptown Church to stand unashamedly on the gospel of Jesus Christ and the transforming power of the Holy Spirit inside of our lives. May you help us to live like you, act like you, speak like you, and be unashamed of the gospel that we can share that and talk with others as we reason with them, explain to them, share with them, life-transforming message of Jesus Christ, in whose name we pray. Amen. All right, if you want to stay standing, we're just going to sing that bridge to the song, Heal Our Land, in case you're following along on your phones. Let's close out this service thinking about that prayer of, yeah, asking for God to just hear our cry and heal our land. We have a lot of healing that needs to happen, but it's going to come through the Holy Spirit, and it's going to come through the church, and that means it's going to come through us. So let's pray this, this, this together as we sing. Make it a prayer.
so much for this time that we had together, God. It's hot, Lord, but your spirit is here. We thank you for this weekend, for the reminder of our freedom as a country, but today we focus, God, on our freedom in Christ, our freedom in you. And God, we thank you for your spirit. We thank you for your presence with us, God. Would you pour out your presence on us, God? Would you speak to us through your word as we study 1 Thessalonians this week? God, we pray that in every nation that Christ would be known, that they would recognize that our hope and our salvation is from you alone. So God, hear our cry, heal our land. Lord, we give you this day. God, we give you our week. We give you our lives. And it's in this, it's in your precious name that we pray. Amen.